so this is one question that uh, I think maybe you and I can go back and forth on. I think the ultimate answer is they're both bad, but is it in your, in your thought, if to have slightly lower blood sugar at night where you're still chronically asleep or, or I guess chronically low throughout the night, you know, and having low blood sugar at the night, is that end up being uh, more disturbing to your sleep than higher blood sugar? You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, like you said, ultimately, both are not good. You're not going to get great sleep with either one. However, looking at the two, I would say being low is much worse at night than being high. I mean, you have several different reasons for that because you have the fact that being low is a little bit more dangerous than being high. So like, yeah. you're flirting with danger there. But from a sleep, a pure, pure sleep aspect, then you have to think about like what I just talked about, the adrenaline and the cortisol mm-hmm. that's, that's going to be coursing through your body. So even if you are able to sleep through that low, your ability to get into that deep REM is going to be very, very hard uh, mm-hmm. for your body to get there because he, you're basically almost at that waking point the whole night because your body's kind of trying to wake you up, but it's like, mm-hmm. oh, we can get by, but we don't want to go much lower. Whereas with high blood sugar, you're going to sleep decently well and decently through the night. But like I said, you may wake up to go to the bathroom several times and then that mm-hmm. impacts your sleep too. So ultimately, both of them are going to impact your sleep negatively. However, if you have a choice, which neither is a great choice, but if you have a choice, higher is probably safer and a little bit less of an effect on your sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I think when we were talking about um, heart rate variability with the, with the diabetic carnivore, he mentioned it and I've noticed it now too, with my heart rate variability scores with, um, you know, my monitor that I wear. Uh, I wish it auto programmed it where I could write in journal. Cause some of the auto programs were like, did you take a magnesium supplement? Yes, no. And then after so long, it will say, you know, your sleep's 38% efficient when you take 200 milligrams of magnesium at night. You know, um, but that's only when you it auto has yes or no questions. Mm-hmm. And I've reached out to this company and say, hey, it'd be really great for your diabetic population if you could have like an option where you say high blood sugar stable at you know high, high blood sugar stable at no, and then you can actually really correlate without manually me doing it and not having as firm data of saying, you know, my low blood sugar affects my sleep this way. You know, I think it'd be mm-hmm. super cool. Oh yeah. Because uh, it there's no real studies like that out there. Yeah. Um, it'd be, it'd but, be nice if they could like literally link, like link, sync up with your CGM mm-hmm. and like have the real time data. So like it could monitor your sleep in different ways, whether it's with your heart rate variability or whatever mm-hmm. and monitor it to where, you know, it was fine. And then boom, you kind of had a little bit of a dip. Mm-hmm. And then this is what happened to your body in these different ways. But then mm-hmm. when you got it back up, it was fine. Or you had an up and then it wasn't so good, but then it came back down and then this happened. Mm-hmm. That would be really cool. Super awesome. Uh, the issue though is from a couple of email exchanges with them is that because the CGMs are a FDA approved durable medical equipment and these monitors are not, there is some FDA regulation on that that inhibits it. Wow. To actually sync up like that. Gosh darn it, FDA. <laughs> I actually know now one person that works for the FDA. Um, interesting stories, but nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so we regress. But yeah, it would be super cool. But I, I think for my own empirical, you know, N equals one observations of myself that chronically lower blood sugar at uh, even 70 69 like stable at like 68 to 71 throughout the night something like that or 65 to 71 produces lower sleep recovery scores than if i was at 130 throughout the whole night Mm. you know both i think on any given moment like especially before meal 69 like that's lower sure but if you're not getting symptoms like you're about to eat like you know super big deal yeah. Uh, but, or one thirty, like that's a good school, you know, that's a good, good blood sugar before a meal. Right. Mm-hmm. So 
I, I get better if I'm stable around 130 ends up being better than stable around one, around 70 when it comes to my sleep scores. 